Hello everybody, my name is Ruminator and welcome to the first tutorial of SFM. So many people ask me to do a tutorial about the basics and how to do a complete animation with SFM. So I don't even want to talk a lot, a lot around it. So let's get started. I hope you all know how to download SFM. It's free or available on Steam and you can just download it for free. Now, when you start SFM, you get greeted with this dialogue. It basically just wants to know the information you want, um, how you want your project to be. So you can create a new session here, basically a new project, and type in your project name. For this video it's tutorial 1, because it's the first episode basically. After that you have to set up your directory where you want your files to be saved, or your project files. And now here's the frame rate. So it's just the frames per second of your animation. So if you have a rough animation or just want your animation to be a bit movie like a DVD, you can let it on uh, 24 FPS. But if you want your animation to be more smooth and more, well, liquid and crisp, you can use 60 FPS. Now the thing is that 24 FPS is good for um, slower PCs and you want a fast, um, a fast result. But if you have a beefy PC, you can use 60 FPS and it will be much more liquid and crisp, like the latest animation of mine. Alright, let's create the new session. Now, first things first, we have to deal with the interface we have here. On top of here, you see your project name and what shot you're working on. This is the primary viewport. The viewport is basically your camera display you have on your recording camera. Now we have here the animation set editor and this thing here basically displays all your objects, your lights and all that stuff you have in a shot. And you can manipulate them from here or delete them, copy them, etc. Next to it, this sliding thing here has all to do with a animation set you're selecting so you can smooth animations, you can jitter them, or you can just um, make them stay where they are for the whole session. But later to this one, because this one is not important for this episode. Now we have the timeline and this is the most important thing in SFM. Now to use the timeline you have to know what those buttons here do. First of all, we stay here in the clip editor. Like it says, it's a bit like um, using Adobe After Effects or um, any video editing software you have. You have here your picture and it shows your animation in real time if we had one. And you can zoom in via the mouse wheel, zoom out, and those are displaying the seconds. You can change the format as well by clicking on the timer in the, the top. But I'll just leave it here in seconds, because it's the most easiest one. We also see here the duration, 60 seconds. And when we scroll down, we can also add sounds to it by, by right-clicking on it, add clip to track, and now we have all the sounds we have from source games or imported. The sound files have to be in a WAV format, by the way, else it won't work. You can use MP3 as well, but there will be problems with the playback. So that's for the timeline. Now to load a map. We have to right click in this void of blackness. Press on load map. And let's just use payload bad water. It will take a few minutes, one minute, five minutes, depending on your laptop or PC. By the way, this is a live session, so no cuttings in voice and spelling mistakes. If you ever notice one, keep it for yourself. <laughs> Boom! So, our map is loaded and we can finally see something. Now uh, we have no camera selected and we can't do anything. So if we want to move around 
just click on the no camera thingy here. Boom. Now we have the work camera. The work camera is the cameraman itself, not his recording camera. What does it mean? You can't record with a work camera. You can just fly around, set things up, set a scene up, put, play, uh, put objects where they have to be, and then you can create a regular camera or the recording camera, place it where you want it to be, and it records all that stuff in the shot if it's set up as the main camera. So, first, start with the work camera. To use the work camera, you have to left click, hold the mouse button, and then you can just look around with your mouse. Now I want to move to this gate. Just press W like in a shooter. If you want backwards, press S. Left A, right D. If you want to go up and down, you press X to go down and Y to go up. If you want to go fast, you can press Shift. If you want to zoom in and out, you can use a mouse wheel. So, let's spawn our first object. Press on the plus sign, new model, and let's spawn an inkling first. Just for testing purposes. It takes a little while because it's scanning all the models I have. And we should have it down here. Seems about right. And now you see something else spawned here. You can do this manually or by spawning a model because it will be automatic generated. This is the recording camera. So if we click on it again, we see camera 1 has been generated. Camera 1 is our recording camera for this shot we have here. So everything I do with the work camera is not being recorded. It's like putting a static camera on a on a tripod right here. It's the same. Now, what if we want to manipulate that static camera we have set up? We can press on a plus sign, create animation set for existing element because the camera already exists in the scene but is not set up in the animation set editor. We have to click this and just edit. Now we want to move it. Just left click on this camera, drag it into the screen and switch to the motion editor. The motion editor is what it says controls the, mo the motion in the shot. Because if you want to move your camera or an animation object with the clip editor, which is just for cutting the uh, animation or the video itself, you can you, you get this error message. Now the motion editor, we can move the recording camera just like the work camera. It's the same controls. And now, let's move this camera out, like this. Zoom in a little bit, and now we have a scene. We can decorate. To move objects, we have four different tools. First one is just the cursor itself. The second one is a manipulator in three different axes. Up, left or right, and, well, depending on your angle. <laughs> then we have the rotation tool. It's um, yeah, basic visually. And then we have the screen tool. The screen tool allows us to rotate and manipulate the object depending on what we are seeing. The most useful thing here is that little box we have. Left click on it, hold the mouse button, hold shift and move it. Now the model snaps on the floor or better on the collision of the map. So let's put it like this. Can rotate her a bit. And now 
we're basically through with the main basics to manipulate things and make our first, for example, picture. But this is basics of the basics and there will be more stuff in the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just ask in comments below and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye!